Journalists cannot discuss uh, the deposition. The deposition that confirmed that Thief Numbu forged his certificate. Eh? Evidence is everywhere. Media houses all over the world. Uh, even in America. You know, Washington Post, New York Times, uh, uh, Chicago Herald, Chicago Post, and so many like that. Different, different blogs, different, different podcasts. In America today, they are discussing Nigeria president that was a drug dealer and a certificate forger. And the country is just pretending like, so why? Because the last place they want to take is to let this information flow really to the people who actually should hear them. Those who promoted Muslim Muslim tickets. I told you they deceived you. If you are a Muslim and you are fighting that time, watch your mouth. Watch what you say about Islam. I said, please, I'm talking about criminals who are using your religion. And if you are stupid enough to believe that they actually they are Muslims, eh? then I probably would not be able to help your stupidity. So I'm just going to say what I have to say. And I'll just let you get mad and run mad if you have to run mad. These guys don't believe in any religion. For them that they pretended that they are, they are Muslims, does not make them Muslim. And I've said that many times. Their actions and everything about them are so much like people who have, I mean, you know, I don't want to say people who don't have any faith or any belief because I don't, and I'm not that criminal. Like, I don't know how you see it too. Muslims who have a chance of running a country. You have been to Muslim countries. Have you not been to Muslim countries? Eh? Is Nigeria anywhere similar to all the Muslim countries you have been to? Hmm? You have been to Christian countries, countries that are run by Christians, Abi. See, Nigeria is close to anywhere that you can say Christians are in government in Nigeria. But whenever it is time for them to deceive you with your religion. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. eh? Espiritu to the Espiritu Espiritu to Estinus, Espiritu to Estinus. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In the amount of politicians in Nigeria, I said they were deceiving you. Somebody who is a real Muslim will not support a public uh, treasury looters. A real Muslim will not support somebody who is a drug dealer. A real Christian or a real Muslim eh, will never support those who are falsifying their, their documents. Nobody will actually support any. If you all, if those of you who, who, who pretended to be Christians and Muslims, they actually fell for all of their lies. If you were genuinely Christians and Muslims, you will never touch these criminals. A lot of you believe that. Uh, you are fighting for jihad or you are fighting for Allah. Eh? And you defender of Allah. Attorney General of Heaven, Anel. Hmm? Chief Justice of Hell, Chief Justice of Heaven. People where they write the list of those where they go heaven, where they go hell. But they are living in hell themselves. Remember that. So all of you, where they say you be righteous Muslims, how do you feel now? Because we know that uh, there are clerics and all of them are telling you right now, trying to poison your mind and continue to delude your mind, make you believe that it is not really a big thing. It is a real big thing. I'm coming back to that too. Somebody still managed to explain it uh, on the Nigerian TV uh, uh, a while back. Okay? But I'm going to share you the first one from that same uh, United States, from the U.S. Uh conspirators in this whole thing that would not shock me at all we, we don't we cannot prove that yet but that would not surprise me and and i say that because you have to understand the history of chicago state you have to realize that chicago state has had a former president that was federal uh of, that was federally convicted of crimes hmm. they had a financial aid director that was federally convicted of crimes and these people went to prison um hmm. this this is not a surprise to me that they're in the middle of 
this mess. Not at all, Precious. Oh, wow. All right. Interesting. So um, when it comes to the administration of the school proper, how, how you know, what, what kind of due diligence would you say the school actually does, um, you know, in background checks of the academic records that are submitted by students um, prior to admission into the school or for admission into the school? So I would say that um, in terms of what we're talking about in terms of with, with the Nigerian president, we also have to put it in the context of that this happened back in the 1970s absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. absolutely you know now today the technology has definitely changed yes um back in the 70s there's no telling what they were doing i i, I doubt they verified probably anything back in the 70s so that is why i'm saying i could definitely understand how this situation got to where it is today because we're talking about an institution back in the 70s that was doing things that were probably crazy back then mm -hmm. um it's just the fact that um the things that came out in the deposition and just some of the con contradictory statements that we heard from the deposition that that's par for the course in chicago state i've covered this university for over 20 years and they talk out of both sides of their mouth all the time all the time it is very difficult to get information out of this university. Oh, wow. We so so you're saying that university management hasn't been quite honest with students and straightforward in your dealings? Is that what you're no. saying? Ne oh, never have been. Oh, never wow. have been. Oh, wow. No. And, and, and I'm not just saying that. You can ask any Chicago State alum, and they'll tell you the exact same thing. And so, you know, one of the things I find that's funny, Precious, is that people in Nigeria have been asking me, well, you know, how do you feel about all this bad press that's now coming down on the university you attended. And I was like, I'm absolutely happy. I'm absolutely happy because it's now shining a spotlight on Chicago State on an international level, which means now they got to get their acts together or they're going to be heads rolling. And I would not be surprised if the governor of Illinois, as this thing keeps going on, the governor, J.B. Pritzker, if he absolutely steps in and we start seeing board of trustee members resigning or being removed, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the president eventually taking the downfall for this. There's a lot more to this story. And what I'll say is that it's because of the culture of Chicago State and the culture of dysfunction and the history of corruption that they've had within their administration. None of this is shocking to me. It's shocking to you, it's shocking to people in Nigeria. This is not shocking to journalists in the city of Chicago, because we have covered this university for decades, decades. So none of this surprises me. Oh, my goodness. All right, so um, you've said quite a lot, and I'm trying to take, to, to take most of the things that you've said <laughs> in. Um, so that, it's, it's interesting to know that, you know, there's been that suspicion about the school, and, you know, some sort of dealings that aren't straightforward, but what have, you know, our students been doing um, in trying to um, hold the university responsible to uphold at least truth? That's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you for asking that, Precious. Thank you. Chicago State University, when I was a student there in the late 90s, we had a student population, I'd say probably 8,000. students. The current student population in Chicago State is maybe 1,000. Maybe. And this is because of what has been happening over all these years. Their enrollment has just plummeted. It's gotten to the point where a few years ago they were actually considering closing the university. Um, the university is also financially strapped. And so when you have a, a institution like that that is financially strapped because it's being underfunded by the government, being underfunded by the state of Illinois, um, it makes them susceptible to uh, many of the um, things that have been happening in the last few years. And so I'll, I'll just tell you as of recently, um, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, Precious, before this whole thing mm -hmm. with the Nigerian president, 
started hitting the news. There was a story run in the Chicago Sun-Times, which is a major newspaper here in Chicago, and it questioned why the president of this university, President Scott, received a $50,000 bonus that was given to her by the board of trustees when the enrollment numbers are dropping, the test scores are dropping, the graduation rates are dropping, and she's been getting a bonus every year since she's been there. She's been there at least six or seven years. So again, there is so much about this. Um, The professors at Chicago State University were on strike like six months ago. Back in the spring, they were on strike. Um, It's a long story, isn't it? Yes, that's uh, uh, Jay Coyden. I think uh, you remember that guy who wrote, uh, that blogger who wrote uh, his own uh, report when he saw the certificate that uh, President of Nigeria, Tifnubu, presented to INEC, and he said he, was, he just started laughing. That it was so easy for anyone who has been, uh, who probably has been to Chicago State, right? That is so easy. That this is so so laughable, right? That was the guy there on that uh, clip. Okay, now back in Nigeria, this is not this conversation is not allowed. The government has now written media houses, and it's like the uh, the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation, the National Broadcasting Corporation. They are now the lawyers to the president of Nigeria by threatening media houses. I'll come back and read that, okay? But here, remember when the uh, barrister Dele Farutim, he was on Arise, uh, t- Arise News two days ago, and he called Kolu a criminal, career criminal. That prompted that NBC warning. It's the last warning. They will arrest journalists inside the Arise News one day. When the news is live, they will ar- arrest them, shut it down. Bokwari tried that by trying to make laws that will allow him to shut media houses down or arrest anybody at random and all of that. Eh? But Kalu is going to bring that back. But before they do that, this one is not a rise. Somebody decided to make Nigerians understand the real problem, the real issue. Forget about all distractions about any other thing. This is the real issue. Would the uh, Supreme Court of Nigeria allow this? to stay. Hmm? Listen to this. 